Hey, what's up everybody? This is Jerry. Welcome back to our video tutorial series on adaptive layout. Although changing constraints in different size classes is the most common way to adjust your layout, sometimes you just don't have enough room in the most constrained environments to show everything that you can show when you have a lot of space to take advantage of. In that case, you want to remove a view completely in the constrained environment or the other way around. You want to add a view to show more information in the larger layouts. Let's get started. Here's what the app will look like by the end of this video. We'll have our weather app showing an additional label for all regular height screens, including iPhones and portrait. And then we'll add an additional map view only for regular width, regular height screens, such as iPads. Note that the starter project for this tutorial has been converted to using stack views. In the last video, we just used constraints because that was our focus. But stack views are very useful for making your layouts simpler and easier to modify, so we'll be using them going forward. We won't be going into detail on them, so if you need more information, check out that video tutorial series. You got a glimpse of how this works already back in video number one. And just like constraints, you can select any size class and then start adding views. Interface Builder will set it up so that these views will only be installed for that size class and its more specific derived size classes. If you go up the chain, then as usual, those views will be uninstalled. When you're uninstalling constraints, you can just select it in the size inspector and press delete, and that will uninstall it for that size class. But with a view, if you select it and press delete, that will actually remove it from the storyboard entirely. You saw in the challenge for tutorial one how to use the installed checkbox, but a handy shortcut is to press command delete, and that will uninstall the view for the current size class only. Another thing to keep in mind is that if you have an outlet connected to a view, that outlets default to implicitly unwrapped optionals. You might think that if your view can be uninstalled that you would need to change it to a regular optional and check for nil, but the system keeps a reference to the view even when it's uninstalled. If you need to check if a view is installed, check if the super view is nil. In the last tutorial, we were focusing on constraints. So I hadn't had this converted over to using stack views so that we could see how those constraints work and how we can work with them in adaptive layout. But UI stack view is a very useful new tool in iOS 9 for quickly uh, laying out your views and we'll see how it makes some things easier in just a minute but the starter project for this demo has been converted to using UI stack view so if you're if you've been following along you'll you'll want to pick up that starter project so that you can see what we've done with the stack views okay let's take a look in the preview assistant editor and on an iPhone 4 inch in portrait which is a, a regular vertical size class. We've got a little bit of space above and below the existing labels. And then, of course, if we look at iPad, we've got even more room to, to deal with here. And just like we can add or remove install or uninstall constraints based on size class, we can install or uninstall views based on size class. And that's what we're gonna do here. So we want to duplicate this location label, but we only want it to show up in a regular height. Now we were looking at the iPhone, and so we could pick this uh, compact width regular height, but we want it to be installed in the most generic size class that we can. And so what we really want is any width regular height because the iPad has room to show it as well. So we'll pick that size class. And then let's duplicate this label. Hold down Option and drag it down to the bottom. And then let's just change its text to say sunny. And we'll just change the size up and back down just to get it to resize correctly. Okay, let's take a look at this in the preview assistant. And we'll see in the regular height, it now shows that label. And if I rotate to compact height, it still shows it. So let's make sure that this label only shows in the regular height. So let's add a size class setting for any width 
regular height and we'll uninstall it in any any and we'll leave it installed in the any width regular height now if we rotate we'll see that it goes away okay so we've added a new view in one size class and a regular height size class and in the regular regular size class regular width regular height size class we we have even more room so let's add a map view to that size class so that it'll show up just on the iPad. First let's switch to the regular regular size class and then let's drag this map kit view out. And the easiest way to tell where it's going to go, we want it to be positioned in between these two stack views, the one for the labels and the one for the the buttons is to drag it into the document outline. We want it to be lower than the button stack view so that those buttons will appear on top of the map view. Okay, we want this to be underneath the stack view here, so we'll just drag that down. So the first thing we want to do is in other size classes, this label stack view is sort of centered in, in its super view, in this shaded view. But in this size class, we want it to move up to the top to make room for this map view. So let's look at the constraints on the label stack view. Okay, this one that aligns the center Y, we don't want that to be installed in this size class. So we'll delete that. And then we'll just set its top constraint to its super view at zero and update the frames. And for the map view, we want it to be constrained on all four edges. So let's do that. Okay, so we can see that uh, it constrained on the top edge to the the label stack view and that's what we wanted and on the leading edge to its super view and on the bottom edge to its super view but we accidentally created a constraint between the map view and the stack view that contains these buttons that's not really what we wanted if we go over here and and pick the trailing space to the button stack view constraint if we just hit delete here it's just going to uninstall this constraint it's not going to remove remove it we don't really want this hanging around we want to delete it permanently. So the easiest way to do that is just to double click on it and that will select it over here in the document outline. If you know which one you're dealing with, you can just find it in the document outline, but it's usually easiest to find it in the size inspector and then double click on it and just hit delete. And that will delete it permanently. Let's create the correct constraint there. We want this to be zero, but not related to the button stack view, but to its super view, the shaded view. So we have that constraint and that's what we expected. That's what we wanted it to look like. Okay, now in, in order to set up the map view, we need an outlet and code. So let's open up the assistant editor again, but this time instead of looking in preview, we'll just switch it to automatic. We'll hide that right pane there. And I have this outlet, we'll just drag that over to the map view. Now if we look back at the attributes inspector for the map view, we can see that it's only installed some of the time. It's installed in the regular, regular size class and it's not installed in the any, any size class. So any size class other than regular, regular, the map view is not gonna be installed, which is exactly what we want. But we have this outlet now to the map view and we're doing some code in Vue load to load up the map view. And it probably wouldn't hurt just to leave this for all size classes. But what if this initialization was a little bit expensive and you didn't want to do that, you didn't even want that code to execute in size classes where the view is not even going to be shown. How would we do that? Well, you might think that the outlet would be nil in size classes where this isn't installed, but that's not the case. Xcode will still connect the outlet and map view will not be nil. However, if you want to check and see if a view is installed, you can check if its super view is nil, but it's important where we do this check. If we check in view did load, 
the super view will always be nil. You really need to wait until the view has laid out to know whether that view is installed or not. So views that are conditionally installed, if you want to do a runtime check, you need to do it in view to layout subviews. And you could just check for map view dot super view equal to nil to see whether it was installed or not. Okay, let's build and run this. And you can see there's a bug in UI stack view for views that are conditionally installed. That is, they're only installed in some size classes. It doesn't correctly lay them out in the size classes where it's installed. In the challenge for this tutorial, you'll see how to deal with this situation. That's it for this video tutorial. And as always, we'd like to leave you with a challenge. You've seen how to install views into size classes. So your challenge is to uninstall a view in the About screen of the Weather app. Since uninstalling the view also invalidates some constraints and breaks the layout a little bit, your additional challenge is to fix up the layout and get the constraints and all of the views working again and looking good. And as always, you'll find all the details in the attached challenge document. I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.